Let's go racing here at Knoxville. Only the best go three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime. You've got the best. You've got a Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world of outlaws. It's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps. The green flag is waving. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wing Nation. This is the all-girls edition. I'm Aaron <laughs> Everham, alongside the wonderful Ashley Stremme. Steve Post got stuck in Daytona with the weather. Mm -hmm. And uh, while speaking about Daytona, I just want to say a quick uh, a, a little thoughts and prayers are with the Newman family. Yes. Um, thankful that we got some good news this morning, and we hope to continue to hear more. Absolutely. Um, pretty crazy wreck. And as a as the racing world knows, we're a huge family. So uh, it was really cool to see everyone concerned and, and to hear the good news that we got last evening about yeah. Ryan. And let's hope we, we continue to, right. to get good news. Other than that, Ashley, how are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, we just got back from v Florida. Uh, week in Volusia is always enjoyable. It's always warm. And it was a beautiful week down there. And, uh, you know, we're there working with my husband, Race and David, and of course, our customers at Lethal Chassis. And it's always tough to get up to see those sprint cars. But you got to believe that I'm always up there trying to make that chance when I can. <laughs> Does David get a little annoyed with you sometimes when you're more interested in the Actually, cars? he's up there always watching, too. He's not so much watching as to who or what they're doing out there as to what the track's doing with yeah. those cars out there. So uh, he's always up there, so I get to actually watch what's going on while he's watching the track. So it actually is the best of both worlds. Oh, that's great. Well, let's get right to it. Let's get to our classic ink printing, uh, screen printing and embroidery hot topics. Mm -hmm. I think uh, our hot topics need to be who started off on fire. Oh, what a week. Yeah. I mean, Brad Sweet finished top three all five nights, including a victory and taking away the big gator. Yes, yes. Even with All-Stars. I mean, it, yeah. right out of the box, I think he's really set a tone and maybe a precedence for what this year could be. Yeah, and how about Aaron Reitzel? I mean, he, I know he didn't have a good night the first night, but after that, he was on fire. He won an All-Star show, went to East Bay, won the king of the 360s. I mean, some people are showing some strength real early in the season. It's true, and you know, I, I'm excited because we'll we'll talk about this a little bit more in the show as we go, but with Aaron, like you said, the very first night, is that kind of a... I, I'm curious to know if that's kind of a kick in the teeth, if that's the the umph that they needed in yeah. their step to get this year going to make them realize that, hey, we need to figure something out and quick. And obviously they did by picking up some wins later in that week. Absolutely. We'll be talking with Aaron Reitzel later on in the show, as well as Mark Smith. Well, those are our Classic Inc. hot topics. Ashley, you you do some work with Classic Inc., don't you? Absolutely. They're great partners of ours and with the show here at Wing Nation. Um we do a lot with them. All of our T-shirts um, for Lethal Chassis, of course, my husband David races. We do his driver T-shirts. But they offer so much more. They have full custom embroidery for driver driver and crew wear options. Um, custom printing, absolutely incredible. Headwear, outerwear, you name it. Their design team is phenomenal. I know I'm a little nitpicky when it comes to our <laughs> shirts. But I want our guys to look good. And so they deal with me. And they're just absolutely great to work with. So extremely blessed with them. But um, you mentioned Aaron Reitzel. And isn't he our... Uh... Yes. He is our Dryden Diesel All Def Defying Move of the Week. It was last Monday at East Bay, the Ollie's Bargain Outlet All-Star Circuit of Champions. This is from Flow Racing. Blake Anderson on the call is moved from third to first in one corner. So now here's the Dryden Diesel All Def Defying Move of the Week. And now for the Dryden Def Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on-track moves. brownie has got company from still Stewart Reitzel. Three car battle for the lead in turn number two. Down the back stretch move, Reitzel. Reitzel goes two for one into the lead. Aaron Reitzel with a magnificent move to take the lead. That Def Defying Move was brought to you by Dryden Diesel All Def, the official Def of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. In Diesel, all deaf defying a move of the week. DRF is engineered exclusively for high performance racing engines that require maximum performance against the toughest competition. Drydean's DRF racing oil is the official racing oil of the world of outlaws. And you can't forget our folks at Plan B Sales. Absolutely incredible. They these little sprint cars right here? Yep, Plan B sales. Check them out. <laughs> Gotta love them. They were founded in 2010. Um, they started as Lionel and Chase Authentics apparel distributor. And now they do Auto World, Greenlight Collectibles, Barnard, and University of Racing Lines. 
huge inventory, incredible stuff. They do a lot of our sprint car guys too. And a little uh, inside information here for you. If you use the promo code MRN, you actually get free shipping on your order. So be sure to check out Plan B sales. Absolutely. Now on the Sage Fruit Hotline, we have Aaron Reitzel. Did we get him? No? Nope. No, no Aaron? All right. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Gotta love it. Well, All you know, right. these you know. guys, they're still probably on dirt time. I True. know it's only 12.05. <laughs> and knowing Aaron, he's probably on the way to another racetrack. Or, I mean, right? I wonder. Well, I'm curious. We'll have to ask him if we can get him on the phone here. But uh, I'm curious to see if he'll be hitting the icebreaker this weekend or, or where his yeah, travels take I mean, him. Because the All-Stars are actually off until, I think it's mid-April. April 14th, I think, is yep. their first race at Attica. So, We've but he's a- known for catching any race he can Gosh, in the meantime. Right? I mean, he he won the 360 races at East Bay. He was the 2015 ASCS National Tour champion. And, and speaking of ASCS, they kick off February 28th, 29th at Canyon Speedway Park in Peoria, Arizona. Mm-hmm. Uh, then they go through a California swing. Um, it's just a great series. They've got nine regional tours, six wing and three non-wing. I love what Emmett Hahn has done with ASCS. I mean, they are like truly the king of the 360s. I mean... <laughs> You hate to say that because there's some other great series out there, but they kind of set the bar high. Absolutely. And hey, what what better way than to keep our sport continuing to grow? Um, I know we're going to be talking to Mark Smith later, and it'll be interesting to see and catch up with him on the USCS stuff that they have going down there when he does the the winter heat yeah. tour that he just um, does. And the fact that he travels so much with those tours, it's incredible to see what these little tours. I know we always talk about the World of Outlaws and the All-Stars because they are our flagship, yep. if you will, uh, national touring divisions. But there are so many little great series out there that really race a ton of races throughout the year yeah, absolutely. and incredible to follow along. Well, why we've got some time while we're trying to get any of our guests at this point, <laughs> why don't we take a look at the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame calendar? So Monday would have been Colby Scrogan and Myron Stevens' birthday. Today, Tom Holden, Jim Elkrich, and T.E. Pops Myers. Mm-hmm. Thursday's birthdays, Bobby Unser, the man, and Tony Wilman, I love me some Bobby Unser and his wife, Lisa. They're, they're just such good people. Saturday, Emil Andres. But tomorrow's birthday is Rick Ferkel. He was quoted as the Ohio Traveler, 1995 inductee into the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. He started in 1965 with limited success early on and dubbed himself the Zero Hero. In 1973, uh, he was the Ascot Pacific Coast champion. 1974, Western World Champion at Manzanita. 1978, World of Outlaws and continued true outlaw schedule. He had 38 wins with them. And in his retirement, he is an official, he's a mentor, he's a team owner, he's an ambassador. And one thing I saw about him recently, Christopher Bell, before his debut at Daytona, uh, listed all the people who have been really influential in his career. And Rick Ferkel was listed as how much he's cool. helped him. And I just thought that was neat. He, he was helpful in my career. And I think a lot of sprint car drivers could say the same. Really? I didn't know that. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, what Christopher did, I'm glad you brought that up. It was such mm-hmm. an incredible little video. It just showed how down to earth Christopher is and not forgetting where he came from. I know. But I, he's such a good kid. Yes. All right. I think we've got a guest. On the oh, Sage Fruit yes. Hotline, we have Mark Smith. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Good. How are you girls doing today? <laughs> Good. Aren't you excited you got the all-girls show? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I enjoy that and all all the time. <laughs> so, Mark, I mean, gosh, you're off to a, a great start. Three wins already. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we've had a really good start to the season uh, with the USCS deal. And uh, we actually ran two all-star shows. We, we did okay. One night I had to run the 360. Actually, I finished better with my 360 than I did with my 410, but, uh, uh, we had, uh, an 11th and a 12th with them and, uh, we had a pretty good night. Absolutely. And Mark, we talk about Florida because, well, that's what's happening right now, but you go every single year. And in all honesty, you fare rather well down there every single year. You're always coming home mm-hmm. with wins of some sort. Is there something that you that just really meshes? Is it something that the tracks you're used to back here and Pen- back here, back home in Pennsylvania, <laughs> I guess you should say, um, that mesh with you? What just seems to click with you? Because it always seems like you're at the top of the list after Florida in February. Yeah, well, I guess uh, the tracks are real kind of greasy and slippery and uh, we're usually pretty good on that stuff and like at home it uh, we have a lot of grip here uh, compared to down there and 
we we fare pretty well here too but uh it seems like we do a lot better when it's uh dry slick or just that greasy uh it's like a filmy greasy style of dirt i'm not sure what it is but it uh it works well for us and the greasier the better down there but uh that's kind of what happened to us on on saturday night and we uh the, the race started off the track was a little greasy and we we drove right to the front and uh and then the track started to get some get some tack to it, and we got a little tight, and then that's when Aaron ran us down and and drove by us. But uh, but all in all, it was a pretty good night. Mark, when you talk about greasy, does East Bay still kind of do that thing where I don't know? People used to talk about when I ran there that the tides actually affect the track, where the the moisture comes in and it gets greasy. Is that still the case? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that that's the way it was every night, except for except for our big night, which I I was. I was kind of, uh, I knew we were kind of in trouble before we started the, the feature that night because the air was drier, the tide was going out, and uh, I, 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 I freed up just a little bit, but it, it didn't do what I wanted it to do, and it kind of bit us. But uh, all the other nights, it stayed real greasy, and except for that, that final night. But yeah, the, the tides and the air definitely makes a difference on how that track reacts. It's so true, and it really affected Volusia this year as well with the, the track, just the dew points and everything that goes on. It's incredible how these guys really have to study these racetracks down there. Um, Mark, now USCS, they continue on in Mississippi, of course. Um, will you follow Hi. them any farther than this, or do you head back to Pennsylvania? How does your schedule really plan out? Obviously, the icebreaker at Lincoln is this weekend, um, and you're the 2010 winner of that race. Is that something that you'll try to hit, or will you follow USCS? Where does your schedule really go from here well we have a the they call it a winter heat series that uh, started in hendry county with the uscs and then it, uh, it continues over to alabama uh, actually i'm at home right now is that i'm actually taking a break from washington kind of warming <laughs> up i'm out here in my bibs with all bundled up freezing but uh, uh but yeah we'll we'll continue we're going to leave friday and head down there's a, a race in dothan alabama we're going to leave friday and head to that and then uh, we'll stay out there for three weekends there's uh i think there's uh seven races left in that series so we'll we'll hit all of those and uh and then we'll come back home and i just kind of shoot from the hip when it comes to race and we just find where we could go with what pays the best you know for for the 360s and what makes the most sense because uh you know these the the uscs deal i I'd, I'd like to do a lot of the ascs but uh they're they're from the midwest to the to california and it just it's logistic wise it's it's real hard for us to make some of those shows but the uh, the uscs is a lot a lot easier to get for us you know it's because it's from the you know the mid-south like mississippi Louisiana, Florida, you know, North Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, them them places and it, it's a little easier to hit. Those are those are within fifteen to eighteen hours, which I can handle that, but doing twenty three to thirty some hour trips isn't very fun. <laughs> That's amazing that for you, you know, fifteen to twenty hour trips is, is no big deal. But speaking of, of logistics and calendar and schedule how hard is it? I mean, you've run a lot of races. You run some ESS, USC, you run some Pennsylvania shows. How is it to manage that on top of your business, the chassis business. Well, it, it, it gets tough, um, but I can I can answer my phone while I'm on the road, and I have uh, Jason Schultz that works in the shop for me, and uh, he takes care of a lot of stuff there while I'm gone. Um, but I'm still able to uh, handle some things, you know, while I'm on the road, and I could carry my laptop, so I can still do billing and you know and deal with customers and stuff. And a lot of times I'm I'm racing with my customers, so I can usually, I'll bring my products or whatever that if they need something, I'll just bring that stuff with me. So I'm, I'm kind of working and racing at the same time. Awesome. Good stuff. I love it. As a chassis builder myself, I understand how to work that working and racing thing. It has to happen because it's so cool because you get to actually be the R&D and the development on your race cars and, and help your customers and work along the way. And that being said, your debut. I, I've just got to ask real quick before we go to break. Um, Eldora Truck Race, you finished mm. 15th in your very first debut. Will we see you back in a truck this year at Eldora? Well, yeah, you never know. We're uh, we're working on some stuff. I know I know Al Nice would like us to, to be in a truck for him this year. Uh, 
you know, we may do some things with him, but, uh, you know, it all comes down to funding and, and uh, hopefully we can come up with something, but it's not out of the question for sure. Awesome. Well, Mark, we hope to see you at Eldora, and I'm sure we'll be talking to you more in the season as you put some more victories under your belt. Thank you very much for your time today. Well, thank you, and I'd, I'd just like to thank uh, NGK Spark Plugs. They uh, came on board this year for their, uh, you know, for our 2020 season and Simpson Racing Products. I just want to thank all of them. Obviously, uh, Mach 1 Chassis, NRG Controls, Rider Racing Engines. DSI shocks, wings unlimited. You know, you got to get all them people in because <laughs> without those those people, you you can't you can't do what we we like to do. So, so I just want to thank all of them. Absolutely. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Mark. All right. Thank you. We'll see you. All right. Bye. I think we're gonna hop right over on the Sage Food Hotline. I think we've got Aaron Reitzel now. Oh, no, I'm lying. Maybe we don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All uh-huh. right. Hey, Aaron, you there? Or not. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're just failing miserably. Yep, I'm here. Oh, oh yes. And thank you. <laughs> it was getting real ugly sorry. over here, Aaron. Thank you. <laughs> We were worried if you were going to answer or not today. We're glad you did. Yes, yes, because <laughs> Ashley and I are, uh, it's an all-girls show today, and it's kind of a hot mess, but we're going with it. Yeah, sorry about that. I was, I'm actually back in Texas. I uh, had to come down here for a few things, so I was digging through the old shop, and actually my dad ran out, and I guess he was listening. He's like, hey, they're trying to call you. So. <laughs> well, thank your father. We appreciate it. <laughs> we appreciate him for getting you to answer the phone, but also for watching our show. <laughs> yeah, for real. But in all seriousness, uh, Aaron, you're off to a great start. I know night one might have not gone as planned, but after that, man, you guys have hit your stride, huh? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, even even night one, it was, you know, with that competition and where we were and whatnot, um, it was pretty cool that as bad as we were, you know, no one panicked and we we're just kind of all talked about what happened that night. And uh, we we felt OK about it because we kind of knew where we were off and then. You know, the next night we came right back and got the win, and um, the rest of Volusia went okay. Um, For where we were qualifying, it actually went pretty good because we buried ourselves every night in qualifying, and uh, I think we got that handled now. And then, you know, East Bay went obviously pretty good. We always talk about Volusia and how it's its own character, its own animal. And it's funny you say that because I know in the sprint car world we talk a lot about how much relies on qualifying. But with the fact that the track changes so much at Volusia, obviously qualifying is still extremely important, but how in tune do you have to be with what your race car is doing and what the track's doing and hoping that your, your qualifying effort goes well? You have to be really in tune and it's almost, I feel like it's almost just luck because even though you, uh, you think that it's not greasy anymore or whatnot you're watching and you're like oh it's, you think it's starting to go slick and, and then whatever the the dew point picks up or the tide comes in or then you go out and it gets greasy and it's heavy all over again so it's it's a tough place to get a hold of um i'm really glad we only go there once a year <laughs> really with all the success that you have there wow yeah it, it's just tough it's it's really tough um and it's I heard Donnie say it, and that made me feel pretty good to where everything you go down and learn in Florida, uh, you won't do it again for the rest of the year because it's a one, one of one of a kind. And why is that? I mean, I know we talk about the track is um, it's different every night, and it can be one night rubber down. It's like, but why? Why is that? I mean, there's other half miles that you go to or, or tracks that carry that much speed. Why is Volusia so different? I don't know. I, I don't know if it's the <laughs> dirt being so close to the sea or or what it is, but it it is a different character, that's for sure. And did you notice that this year, to me, it seemed like it was even more different than it has been in years past? I thought so. I thought I, it was like it, it, it was weird how it just stayed so fast all night. It seemed like years past, I remember it getting – wider wider and race here and i don't know it was it seemed like it was really hard to get it to dry out a little bit and that for what was it the second night i believe it was it was taking rubber like crazy and then you see guys blowing right rear tires left and right 
I, I want you to talk about that from your perspective, because are you at that point when you see a guy starting to blow tires, are you like, oh, I need to be a little bit more conservative or am I next? What What is the thought process that actually hmm. goes through your head during that? Yeah, that night there, like you pretty much knew it was going to take rubber. I don't think they could have put enough water on it to make it not take rubber is how, how hard the wind was blowing all day. But mm-hmm. yeah, um, I we knew it was going to be a tire race. And I tried to not go, I tried to take it easy as long as possible, but still race for the win. And um, the guys that you've seen blowing tires, I kind of like when, when I seen the Wayne Johnson blow a tire and I figured uh, he was smoking his tire in front of us the whole time. So I kind of figured I had a few extra laps more than what he had. And, (laughs) but when it, it just kept going, you know, green straight back. It was green, white, green, white checkered. And it just kept going green, yellow, green, yellow. I didn't know how many more of those I've had left because the tires were getting uh, less air. And, you know, then that puts more wear on them. And so, I mean, honestly, if it, they didn't go green checkered, we didn't have another one left. Yeah. It went, it went flat on the scales. Wow. Did it really? That I, I remember those, those, races that it took rubber and it was always such a uh, I don't know I mean it's been a long time since I've done it but it was always <laughs> such a crap shoot you're like uh, you want to push it you can't push it but Aaron you went from Volusia to East Bay in a 360 and then you we were crowned king of the 360s talk about how much strength that shows in your team that you can go win an all-star show have a great showing at Volusia and then go do as well as you did at East Bay yeah just <clears throat> the the people I got surrounding me and the what the Bothmans allow us to do, you know, equipment wise, it uh it definitely shows what how we can just change motors and um be able to compete and it was actually really cool for me to win that race. Uh if there was one three sixty race I wanted to win, it was probably that one, seeing uh Ronald. Ronald actually grew up probably about an hour from me and he was a guy that I watched uh race when I was younger and would go get hero cards and get autographs from. So that was uh that was a race I really wanted to win. Um, one of our sponsors, uh, Sky McDonald, the Zavaloy, he grew up with Ronald. And I actually raced for Ronald's cousin, Greg Laney, one time in micro. So that was uh, that was a pretty big win for me. That's I, awesome. Yeah, I was actually, uh, unfortunately, there the year that we lost Ronald. And it, it is such a special race. It's the beginning of the year. It's early. But uh, what a, a nice guy he was. I had just had the opportunity to, to meet him. So it's cool to hear a little bit uh, a backstory and how sentimentally it was a good victory for you. Yeah, for sure. Agreed. Um, I got to have the opportunity to watch my dad and Ronald race, race for the win um, for a What of Outlaws race at Port Royal Speedway oh, years wow. ago. So uh, always had a, a whole lot of fun with Ronald back in the day. But um, Aaron, so let's talk about the All-Stars a little bit. So obviously the beauty of them kicking off in Florida, you don't really have to worry about points because points don't really start until you get kicked off here in April um, at Attica. So what is this kind of next few weeks? What is it? Six, eight weeks at this point. What does it look like for you? Are you, I know you said you're in Texas right now. Are you going to be doing some racing down there? Are you going to be heading up to the icebreaker at Lincoln for that craziness? What, what does the next few weeks look like for you? Uh, we'll, we'll follow the outlaws all the way till to Larry. And then that's when we have to turn around and go back to the other side of the country <laughs> and run, um, Attica and then do the Virginia PA swing. So that's, uh, that's our plan. Wow. Aaron, how many races do you have on the schedule? If you're planning to do all that and the full all-star schedule, I mean, that, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, at the start of the year with the Australia stuff I did and chili bowl and all the other racing I got going on, it was 108 races. Wow. God bless America. That is amazing. <laughs> I, I want to talk about that a little bit just because you, you mentioned it. So you didn't have an off season, which I don't really know who does have an off season anymore, <laughs> but you did a ton of racing between the chili bowl going down under. How did that really help maybe actually your week in Florida? Cause you didn't really have to kick any dust off. Uh, I would say it helped out a lot. Um, I, I actually went the entire from November to now I'd never had two weeks off. Oh, wow. So that was, that was something different that I've never done before. And I would say it definitely helped out a lot because like the 2018 season when we started it, I think I had, 
think I went like four months without racing at one point. And then we kicked it off in Vegas. And I felt like it took me all the way till May to actually like hot lap the car and feel comfortable and not feel like I was um, a first time racer. Wow, that that's so interesting because some some drivers kind of prefer a, a little bit of a right. break. You know, speaking of off season, you said in Victory Lane, I think one of the nights that in the off season, your team does a lot of work on the cars to make them faster. What do you do in the off season to to make a car faster? I mean, if you're not at the track every night making adjustments, do you? How do you go about that? We just we just analyze everything that happened throughout the year. Um, any failure we had or anything that we felt like, you know, was a potential failure throughout the year. And, um, we just try to, uh, try to work on that. And that's, you know, one, you know, running for points, I felt like, um, in the all-stars, that was some of our biggest problems was part failures and stuff. So, uh, we work, we worked harder on that stuff like that. Love it. Well, over the winter, there was a huge announcement that the All-Stars let out. And uh, you as the reigning champion have to maybe put a little extra pep in your step. But uh, $258,000 extra added to the points fund. What does that mean to you? That's uh, that's big. Uh, that's really cool. Um, you, that's something you just don't see very much is purses getting added that much more on theory. So, uh, Really pumped and uh, proud to be a part of the All-Stars. That's awesome. Well, Aaron, congrats on the early success this year. We hope it continues for you. And uh, safe travels on all your coast-to-coast travels (laughs) and everything you've got coming up. Uh, Thank you very much for your time here today. All right, guys. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Well, that was... Uh, Aaron Reitzel on the Sage Fruit Hotline. And and Ashley, you know a little bit about Sage Fruit, don't you? I do. I actually had the opportunity to travel out to Washington with Sage Fruit. Um, Obviously, they've been with the sprint car industry as a proud sponsor of the sprint cars for the past 17 years. Um, And they've been a partner of ours for the past five. Um, Chuck and Casey are absolutely phenomenal Mm -hmm. at Sage Fruit. And they just don't sponsor sprint car racing. They are fans and lovers of sprint car racing. You can find Chuck at the Chili Bowl, Knoxville, both of them. Just sitting up in the stands somewhere. Enjoying life and enjoying sprint car racing. Um, They value the relationship with their fans. And so if you go to your local grocer, make sure you ask for Sage Fruit because we need to support those who support our sport. Absolutely. And another one of those that supports our sport, and especially us on Wing Nation, is is HRP. Now, Ashley, have you ever heard the real story about me going on a test drive with Postman? I mean, I saw the video, and I think you should have had a five-point harness, but tell me about, let's hear your side of the story with HRP. Let's just get this straight. (laughs) HRP makes the best pit utility vehicle. I mean, the thing is sweet. There's everything you need. There's spots for rear axles, front axles, shocks, torsion bars, everything. Cup holders. I mean, it is great. It handles well. Yeah. Cup holders for mimosas. Perfect. (laughs) But in all seriousness, I mean, this thing is is a beast. It's amazing. It was cool. Yes. But you put Postman behind the wheel. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I I literally went to my friends at Bell and grabbed a helmet. (laughs) And I mean, Postman might do his radio thing just fabulously. But But he's not going to get behind the wheel of a sprint car. We'll leave that to you. If he ever asks you to get behind the wheel of the mule with him, which at one time he called a bull, just for the record, on air. He said, he starts talking about the HR, HRP bulls. And I looked at him and I'm like, what are you? When, what is he when talking did we start about? breeding cattle? That was one of those times where I lost. I literally like had to walk <laughs> off the set. I was laughing. But in all seriousness, <laughs> seriousness, go check out HRP. They have awesome products for your trailer, um, for for everything. And their mules are fantastic, beautiful, beautiful no matter what Postman does with it. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't ask him to test drive your stuff and it'll be fine. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention too, uh, we we're talking to Sprint Car Hall of Fame earlier. Mm-hmm. They have the Priority Aviation sponsorship coming up this year, which I think is so neat. And um, last year when Lance DeWeese mentioned that he was going to you know, get to be part of it, I feel like some people backed off. So obviously Lance, they raised a ton of money for the Sprint Car Hall of Fame. What Richard and Jennifer Marshall do is amazing. I mean, they are, yes. they're just incredible people. And this year, they've decided to now do a second and third place. Oh, no. So, I, I mean, again, they're always That's stepping awesome. it up and making things better and better. So, check out this Priority uh, Aviation Sponsorship and uh, support your, your favorite driver and get them to Knoxville. That's right.
Maybe the 69K again. Absolutely. <laughs> so I, I think we've about covered everything. I think we did we all did. right today. We did. I know uh, we're not Steve Post, but hopefully it was I know. acceptable. We, we, yeah, I know. Post we didn't say it's below. our favorite time of the week. <laughs> we did it. All right, we got it in for you, Postman. Uh, but make sure to get your uh, your Wing Nation apparel. It's on the All-Star Circuit of Champions trailer is, this yes. year. Mm-hmm. Um, and also you can check it out on wingnation.com. We're on social media, of course. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube page. Hey, make sure you tweet your seat so you can be on our Saturday show on MAV TV. Yes. And coming up on Thursday, you're going to want to watch this or listen to this one, watch it however you do, because we have Peter Murphy on. And Peter Murphy is Australian. And Ashley has a little thing for Australians. So it could they be. just have a really cute accent. I'm it's going to get very interesting. You're not going to want to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> also coming up this Saturday on Mav TV, mm-hmm. and continuing All Girls Week, Ashley and I <laughs> interview Brad Sweet. Uh, so that'll be a great one. It will be. And maybe next week Steve will be back so you won't have to deal with both of us. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but thank you guys all for tuning in today to Wing Nation. Wing Nation has been brought to you by Hercules Tires. Ride on our strength. Watch Wing Nation Saturday mornings on MAV TV. You can also find Wing Nation on wingnation.com or your favorite podcast provider. Wing Nation is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.